there and welcome back to another Andor video. And today we'll be talking about episode 10, One Way Out, which sees Cassian bust out of prison in what is a very epic and heart-wrenching action sequence. Whilst we also see more pieces of the puzzle start to come together on Coruscant. A really great episode this one, and a great conclusion to the prison arc. And so yeah, with all that being said, let's jump into the episode. So we start off the episode in the aftermath of Olaf's death. Cassian and Kino have had their little steam clean, and are now getting ready to head to their bunks. Kino, he's very shaken up. All this time he's been fixated on the end date of his sentence. He was so certain he was going to get out and go home, that all of this would simply become a less than pleasant memory. But that illusion's now been shattered, and he realises that they really mean nothing to the Empire at all. And so, he's starting to spiral. And I'll only say this once, but I could probably repeat myself for every single scene. Andy Serkis is such a beast in this show. He puts on such a great performance that has so much heart. I love it. Anyway, Cassian says that they need to try to escape. But Kino seems to have lost hope. Where would they go? How do they get out? There doesn't seem to be any ships except for those that drop off prisoners. They have nowhere to run. But Cassian's insistent. He thinks they need to act soon, as after this, they're going to bring in more guards, because they're going to be afraid, and thus, they need to start their escape when they can bring in the new man that's going to replace Olaf. So tomorrow is when they have to strike. And I can understand Kino's hesitancy. An hour ago, he was just hoping to get through the next 200 days. But now he has 12 hours until they're going to try and overthrow the guards and escape. An escape that's certainly going to lead to a lot of them getting shot. But on the other hand, Cassian is right. If they're ever going to have a chance of escaping, this is it. Otherwise, the window closes and everybody in the facility is going to be stuck in prison forever. Anyway, Kino and Cass return to the cells and they tell their fellow inmates everything. And honestly... Everybody takes it a lot better than I'd expect them to. I'd be pretty upset. And there's more great acting from Andy Serkis here as well. He seems to take it the hardest by far, but like everybody else just seems mildly disappointed. <laughs> we then return to the ISB, where they're talking about how the rebels have taken the bait, and soon they'll undertake their planned mission and get slaughtered by Imperial forces. And all the while, the inmates of 5-2-D prepare to take action during their shift. And we get a reminder that Marva is not doing too well on Ferex and is still being closely watched by Cinta. So just a couple of scenes to try and ramp up the tension and tie up some loose ends before the prison break, which I assume is going to take up the majority of the episode's runtime. But first, we have to have Mon Mothma's meeting with the borderline mobster dude from Chandrilla, who's giving her a chance for a loan. And instead of playing it smart and being kind of polite to this dude, she's cold and short with him from the get-go and shuts him down at every opportunity. And maybe he deserves it, but at the same time, it's not the best play if you're trying to strike up a business arrangement. Anyway, true to form, the dude is a bit of a slime ball and doesn't even want any money in exchange. Instead, he wants a return invitation alongside his 14-year-old son, whom he wants to introduce to Mon's daughter. And from there, he wants to potentially secure a marriage. Jesus. So yeah, I think this is Mon's big turning point in the story. I think it's clear that she has to take the money. Otherwise, there's no point for the scene. Why bother if she's just going to hold firm? So I think she will give out the invite, and her daughter is going to figure it out and clue herself in, and it's going to fracture their relationship even more than it was before. So that's going to be lovely. But for now, at least, she holds to her convictions and refuses. And so he leaves, but of course he'll be back. Mark my words. It's all going to end in tears. But then we follow up with Luthen, who's gotten contacted by one of his other informants who wants a face-to-face -face meeting, much to Claire's dismay, who thinks this is highly suspicious. But he wants to go because obviously he wants whatever info he can get and damn the risks. So yeah, it does end up being one of the ISB dudes as we see later in the episode. And yeah, I guess I'll just address that now. It's the ginger guy with the mustache. And I really liked how they did this. He's a character in the ISB who's slowly but surely gotten more and more screen time. But he's always in the background. And in hindsight, now that we know, you can see that he was the squealer. Slowing down their protocol. Getting the ISB to take their time, be methodical getting more and more involved in the cases. And obviously it turns out he's the spy, and yeah, he's gonna die for sure in the future. I feel it. Anyway, he has a very tense conversation with Luthen where he tries to quit, as he now has a child and he doesn't want to risk himself anymore. And the tension in this scene was just so perfect. I kind of half expected Luthen to just pull out a blaster and waste this dude, but he doesn't, and he just gives him a really intense monologue and then tells him, too bad, you're not quitting, goodbye. Just a great scene. And then we come to the meat of the episode. The prison break. We have a really intense sequence where everybody on the floor is just pretending it's business as usual. But in the meantime, they're scoping out their escape, getting weapons, preparing to fight. And Andor goes into the bathroom to finish off his work on the pipes, trying to saw through and rip out the pipe to cause a flood. But then, as he's halfway through that, 
a new guy appears on the floor. Time's up. Anyway, Cassian then manages to break the pipes and the water starts coming out, just slowly enough that the guards don't notice, whilst everybody gets on program and the lift starts to descend. They then stage a little brawl to distract the guards, before Cassian and one of his friends break the lift. And the new guy even proves himself a Giga Chad. He arrives, he notices a riot, he joins the riot, he kills a guard, and then he dies a hero. Utter Chad. Poor new guy. The prisoners then start throwing stuff at the guards, and a few of them get killed doing so, whilst Cassian starts to climb the scaffolding to take out the guards with blasters. One of his friends dies doing so, the guy he originally planned it all with, so that was a bit sad, before the guards try to spark the floors, but the water on it short circuits it. Cassian then kills the guards, and the prisoners break out of the workroom and into the halls. And this whole sequence, where they just tear through the prison slaughtering the guards that have tormented them for years, it was so epic and so cathartic. It was so awesome to see them rushing through the hallways, freeing the other prisoners, rallying them to come and fight, screaming one way out over and over. And then they get to the control center, and these pricks were really just going to fry the entirety of level 5, so I feel no sadness when one of them gets shot dead, and the others are threatened and traumatized. And so they cut the power, and then Andy Circus once again shows off his skills as he delivers a great speech about how they need to take charge of their fate and fight for freedom, that they outnumber the guards, and the power is off. They can win this. And as he says this, of course, we get a big montage of the prisoners on all floors doing just that. Fighting for their freedom and making their escapes. And then there's the heartbreaking moment where after all of that, Kino gets left behind. Because to escape, they need to jump into the sea. But he can't swim. And Cassian doesn't even get a chance to try and help him because he gets knocked into the water. God damn. It's like Luthen says later in the episode when he's talking to the spy. He's giving everything for a sunrise he'll never get to see. (sighs) <sighs> the copium tells me I need to pretend he commandeered a ship or something, and he landed and escaped that way. Yep, that totally happened, he's alive, we just won't hear about it. And anyway, so Andor and Malshi, his commanding officer and friend from Rogue One, escape together, swimming all the way to the beach before running off into the desert. And there doesn't seem to be anybody else around, so either they drowned, or they went their separate ways. Either way, it's a bit of a bleak ending, but it was a really great episode. And I think that prison break was one of my favourite extended sequences in Star Wars history. Maybe it's recency bias, but it was just so awesome. And the episode was really well paced as well. So hopefully they keep that momentum going through the final two episodes of the season and cut out some of the bloat. But yeah, with all that being said, that's the end of the episode. And I would like to say that these were just my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.